Hello. So we are back. Kind of. We are still in uh, lockdown. And uh, I'm kind of bored, you know. So long. So today, let's try and do some, uh, you know, some theory about uh, electronics, motherboards. Let's speak about the. Uh, about uh, everything what is related with the faults on the laptop motherboard that's all what we can do at the moment hopefully you are uh, safe and well okay when my picture goes off yeah, I got the Diana, Diana uh, set up and my daughter tablet, so we can uh, draw some things, speak about some uh, question. I'm getting all these emails with different uh, questions about different faults. I think it's a good moment for this kind of video. I'm still stuck in the house. I'm, I'm just, you know, it's. I have no tools, so I can't do any video. And uh, no, I didn't leave the house. Diana is going uh, the shopping. She's doing shopping one time per week. But otherwise, we are uh, stuck in house. You know, with this madness with Corona and. From what I seen on the news, uh, UK now it's on the top of the list with the number of deaths. It's kind of sad. Anyway, let's uh, let's start speaking about you know because everyone is looking on the motherboard side, yeah. So first, let's draw the basic, uh, you know, motherboard schematic, okay? And after that, we'll speak about uh, the most likely faults. Because, mistakenly, wrong, on the wrong side, yeah, the people believe you can fix anything on, the, on a motherboard. Doesn't matter what motherboard it is. Maybe it's a TV board. Maybe it's a radio, a stereo, a laptop. It's not. You know, it's it's. You can fix. You can fix whatever it's it's related with the power. Yeah. More or less. But let's say you can't really touch the the. Whatever is digital there, because it's nothing we can. Even the manufacturer, they can't fix these kind of things. Like if you have a data problem on the, a data line on between the chipset and the processor, or between the processor and the RAM memory, no, you can't fix something. You can't find the fault. That's the thing. Even on the whatever you you know a DVD, whatever is digital there, you can't check. You can't you can't touch. But luckily, most of the faults actually they are on, on the on the on the on the power line. You know where is the pressure? Where the, the the voltage is flowing? The current? You know there the problem is most uh, likely to be. You know, yeah, yeah. Most of the faults they are related with the power. Nice. Let's say like ninety percent. Ninety percent. Okay, so let's start with a basic laptop motherboard, yeah? A basic one. Yeah. So first we have the charging board. And we spoke so many times about the charging board. The charging board is a very simple thing, you know, with the plus and minus. No list. No list. If you have the middle pin, and I found many times, when you have laptop like uh, Dell, like HP, Lenovo, 
if, if the middle pin is something wrong, it's, 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 the signal is not flowing for the middle pin, uh, the laptop will not start. Or, in the best uh, case, it will start to not charge. So pay attention on the middle pin there where you have a middle pin, okay? On our case, we have, let's say, uh, uh, we have a plus, whatever charging port you have, a minus, but minus, yeah, uh, is going to the ground. Ground is everywhere, so no point drawing the ground, okay? On the plus, you can have, but not always, you know, you have the first, the second MOSFET. Uh, many people get, uh, uh, how can I say it? Um, you can get lost there, yeah? So if you try to follow the track, visual, I mean, yeah, by your eye, you can get lost because it's not necessary it's going on the or our first muscle but it can go like you have you can have a fuse you can have a carbon uh, resistor there on the floor you, you can have many things you can have a coil so you can have a lot of things the best like how i said every time check with the multimeter multimeter is no lying so you can rely on your multimeter so you can have like a fuse yeah after that, you can have a carbon uh, resistor, non-inductive one. And after that, you have the, your first MOSFET, which usually, but not always, is a channel N one. So that means you have uh, four pins here. Okay. And you have the three on the other side. And you have the gate, which is going some power chip, power management, which also is managing the, the, the charging, the battery charging, okay? So that's our first thing. I'll not draw the, 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 the MOSFET, uh, the MOSFET, uh, symbol yeah because are many beginners they don't, don't really understand the mosfets but we'll speak about this yeah we have so much time i'm getting bored so we can be here for hours so you know just get your coffee and uh, be patient yeah we'll go there So, okay, that's the first MOSFET, which is here only for protection, it's not doing anything else. But I found laptops where actually you don't have a first MOSFET. Actually, you have, um, you have just a diode and that's all, especially on the small laptops. So the first MOSFET can be replaced by a diode. There where are, uh, you don't have too much current on the small uh, netbooks okay but also i found like the first mosfet the second mosfet actually are two so you have two uh, two and after that you have two more especially on the gaming laptops where you need like where there are a lot of currents there huh? so this input can be You can find different variation, yeah? But just check with the multi, it's so easy, you know? If you check with the multimeter from the charging port, the first MOSFET, it should be zero ohms. That's easy. And obviously, uh, you have, uh, you can have many things. You can have capacitors connected to ground everywhere, yeah? But try to don't get loose on this. The best is to check with the multimeter. That's the easy way. Okay. Good. After that, you have the second MOSFET, which also can be uh, channel uh, N. 
gate. That's your second one. And the reason of these mosses are for protection. That's all. Nothing else. Something wrong happened. The MOSFET will cut down the power. Power meaning 19 volts. Okay. So on the end of this chain, <coughs> you still should have 19 volts. Let me see what's wrong with the uh, place. No, the picture is not on place. One second. You know. Okay, now it's better. <coughs> so here you should have 19. 19 and here you should have 19 because that's 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 the, the, the and, and you know there are a lot of faults here when actually you're um, something is wrong there and uh, the voltage is not going through this MOSFET those MOSFETs and uh, it's not necessary you want to trick the motherboard short the MOSFETs it's not but even to find the fault, yeah, you have to just temporarily just short something to carry the voltage. Just to you know what I need. I need my 19 volts power rail to be present. Doesn't matter if 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 if, if that will not fix your fault, but you just go a step forward. Yeah. And after the first two MOSFETs, you have the it's a current uh, resistor here. A very low ohms one yeah very low ohms and obviously from here and here is going to that power uh, management chip and it is reading when the when you have a uh, when the current is flowing through this resistor obviously on the end of the resistors will be some voltage there and that's what the management the power management chip is reading Okay, good. So you have to have 19 volts there. That should be your main thing, you know, checking the 19 volts. We have 19 volts. If we have, we move forward. If not, try to find out why we don't have 19 volts. Simple. Now, after that, you have your main 19 volts power rail. Uh, That's your power management chip. Have gate, gate. Okay, it's controlling the current. And what do you have more? You have a compact MOSFET from the battery. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yes. channel and MOSFET, four pins here, three pins here, and a gate, which gate is also going to the power management chip. Uh, what this is doing, plus battery, okay, what this is doing, uh, the voltage is coming back from the battery on this side, yeah? So that's the coming back from the battery, yeah? It's not a charge. On the old ones, yeah, which, you know, yeah, on the old ones, you have only one MOSFET for the ch charge the battery. But on the new ones, like from the last five, six years, they all have a switching power supply to charge the battery. Okay? So, from same point here, which is your main 19 volts power rail, you have the charging battery thing here. And you have two MOSFETs. Four pins here. Same channel and Three pins here and a gate 
which is going here obviously all three pins yeah it is a switching power supply a basic one okay and you have three pins here and the gate okay and these three pins are the ground connected to the ground and from the middle what do you have you have a coil you have a capacitor going to the ground and after that is going straight on the same point here okay so the discharging of the battery is on this uh, on this way yeah that's the discharging but the charging it's on this way okay and yeah i missed something sorry i missed something here you have another current sensor because the power of management chip want to know with how much current you charge the battery okay so this is going here and also these gates are coming here so you see, you see the, the power management chip is actually doing a lot of things so that's the charging and discharging of the battery okay good from same point this big point this is your main power rail also is going to a lot of power supplies lot so what do you have you have 3.3 3 .3. you have 5 volts what do you have? You have the big one, the 3.3. 3. Don't make a confusion. You have the processor power supply. What do you have? Depends of the depends of the RAM memory. What type of RAM memory you have? The RAM power supply. What do you have? More. You have you have your powers. Depends of the depends of the laptop. You have the graphics if if you have a, if you have a graphic chip or inbuilt processor graphics. But anyway, that's not important. Important is you have to have uh, nineteen volts on each of those power supplies. Let's say, obviously, you check these things because your laptop is dead. So, uh, let's say if you have 19 volts, it's a must to have 3.3. .3, yeah? So, the 3.3, .3, it's always on. It doesn't matter if the laptop is off. And obviously, supplying power, your Super IO chip or startup chip, but has to be always on and i have many questions it's, uh, from people it's 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 not easy to find where is that uh, it's not easy to find where is that power supply or let's say i want to know quickly if my 3.3 volts power supply which is supplying power to the startup chip is on and the easy way, but that's, that's the easy way. So that's what I'm doing every time. The easy way is to check on the power button. There should be voltage all the time. So always you should have 3.3 there. So on the power button, you have ground. Power button. 
And uh, the power button is going to the Super I.O. But most important, from the power button, it is a resistor, which is, is pulling out this track. Okay, so here you should have 3.3. Obviously, when you press the power button, the voltage goes to zero. Because that's the way how the super IO is reading the power button. But always should be few. That's the easy way. You check 19, and after that you check 3.3 on the on the power button. That's the easy way. Okay. Now how can I say it? Yeah, also on the battery side, to finish with the battery, you have plus and minus. Yeah, plus battery, you have minus on the battery, but also the battery is written, and obviously by the, you have clock and data with the super IO. Okay, so it's not necessary if it's not charging, now let's say your battery is good, you replace the battery, because I'm getting a lot of emails about this, but still not charging. It's not necessary to be the battery. Maybe it's a problem with the communication from the battery to your startup chip. Because the charging, the, the charging is it's it's started by this chip, by the, the your startup chip, the super IO chip. Okay. So you have to pay attention. How you can check this? Like how I told you, where it's, where it's a digital communication, you can't really check too many things. But if you have a battery tester, you remember with that battery tester, actually we can check the battery and you can see if the battery is speaking with the, with the software. If the battery is speaking with the software and the software can read the battery, that means your battery is, is fine. At least on the data lines, yeah. So it, it is communicating. When the battery is, is dying, and so the battery, you know, reach that limit and uh, is too used, and the memory from inside of the battery is losing the data, uh, I, it will not communicate anymore, and it will say on your laptop like battery not detected or battery not charging. Okay. Very simple. Good. Now the next thing is you check 19, 19 volts, you can check everywhere on your laptop where you have a power supply path. Power supply path meaning uh, Let's see what's wrong with the... Okay. So power supply path, meaning... Two MOSFETs. Yeah, that's the path. Okay. And here you have... Uh, Gate three pins together here with four pins together. Here you have three pins together. It's going to the ground. So that's the part. This is the gate. Okay. This is going to the driver. But from here. Do you have the coil? Okay. And you have the capacitor which is going to the ground. Uh, usually usually it's an electrolytic capacitor. And obviously that's the output of the power supply, yeah. Output. So that's that's kind of path. It's, it's a path to recognize a power supply, and on the input you will see some uh, ceramic capacitor, which is 
which are bigger than normal you can have one you can have two you can have three even more these ceramic capacitors are more likely to fail you remember always we find a short capacitor it's one of those capacitors okay So that's the path. That's how you can um, find the path. You, you can you can see the the, the most we have two MOSFETs. You have a big square coil. Many people text me. You know my coil is shorted. It is a wire, so it's normal. If you check with the multimeter to be zero ohms, and you have the input the ceramic capacitor. Uh, let's say are more capacitor around it, and you cannot you cannot be sure. You can check on the on those MOSFETs. You have two MOSFETs here, yeah. You can check here if uh, one of your MOSFETs has 19 volts, okay. You can check randomly the multimeter on all this position, like here, like here, here, and here, and see where you have 19, because on some end of these MOSFETs you should have 19. Okay, obviously here on the top, but you don't know which is the top, which is the bottom, which is the middle, which is the drain, the source. You don't know this because it's not important why. Let's say you have these capacitors here, you have these capacitors here, but you are not sure if that's your 19 volts capacitor on the input of this power supply. Okay, that's the input, that's the output. So if you are not sure about the, the capacitors, you can just check on one of the ends of these MOSFETs. So that's the path. But really and truly, I think the people, they don't really understand what the capacitors are doing. And I've seen that from the comment when, uh, you know, the people asking why I'm removing the capacitor, why I'm not replacing the capacitor. And, uh, it it is true. It's it's not easy to understand a capacitor. And I will explain you why. But how can I explain you? It's easy for you. Okay. An electronic, everything has a resistance, and you'll say, you know, sorry, in the it's a ceramic capacitor, there is no resistor. There are two plates with a uh, isolator on the middle, and there's no resistance. It is, yeah. So everything has a resistor, even a ceramic capacitor. Okay, but the best way. To check this, uh, to understand how a capacitor is working, the best way uh, yeah, playing, try and play with, uh, with a audio, yeah? So if you do a audio, you know exactly how a capacitor is behaving, yeah? So let's say you have uh, left channel, right channel, yeah, and obviously ground, uh, let's say it's going from the your preamp, it's going to the amplifier, yeah, the big amplifier, um, and after that it's going to the speakers. Now the thing, <coughs> Uh, no, we don't need stereo signal here. Let's let's get only one. Try and play with the capacitor. You understand? Usually the capacitor, the, the amplifiers, they have electrolytic capacitor on the input, one micro to ten micro or even less. But try and insert on a serial mode a ceramic capacitor. And on that point, you'll find out yeah, your uh, capacitor has resistance. Yeah. 
So it depends of the depends of the size of the capacitor. If you have, if you have let's say a hundred nanofarads, yeah. Uh, with 100 nano, the signal goes most likely how it is, yeah. Like all the the all the audio band, the audio. Um, how can I say it? The full spectrum, yeah, from low to high. Maybe not so many lows, yeah, in 109 nano. Well, let's say here you connect one nano, one nano, one nano, you will have only high frequencies, yeah? So you see the nice high frequencies? Yeah, that's the way, when I was like boy playing with amplifier, that's the way how I get the, because, you know, when you are young, what do you want? You want high frequency, you know, and bass, a lot of bass, yeah? So that's the way how you do it. You connect a capacitor and it's passing only the high frequency. You have one nano, you'll have only the highs there. And the base, you are coming and going through a resistor, yeah? Which you limit the most of the audio, but the, the high frequency, they will pass straight away from the capacitor, yeah? Through the capacitor. Actually, a filter, yeah, is is not like that. It's like you have this capacitor, and actually you have two resistors. You have one capacitor at the ground, and one more resistor. That's a bass and high frequency filter, or loudness filter. No, no loudness, no, that's something else. It's changing with the volume. But when you play with something like that, you'll understand how a capacitor works. Now try to get the signal, yeah? Try and get the signal. And... Uh, why is no erasing? So again, you have the audio signal. And try and connect the capacitor to ground. That will be interesting. Yeah. So let's say again with a hundred nano. You will see like your uh, most of the top of the band goes like it's, it's just going away. So all what is left is like base. That's all. Or very low volume let's say very low volume because it's uh, all that would you will pass to ground by this capacitor or if you have one nano one nano you will send back to ground all the high frequency so you can get rid of all your high frequency that's that i think that's the best way to understand the capacitor how the capacitor has be, are behaving on the on the ic And you'll think, yes, yeah, sorry, but there is no IC. What do you mean AC? Well, it is. Because those MOSFETs are switching. And obviously, it's the same way, like you start a car. You know, the old cars, you spin the key, and, mm, 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 and you can see the light flashing, you know, the... Uh, everything is, it's, you know, the, the beams are flashing. That's the way, because any, any, uh, any switching here, we, we, it will create some spikes here. Okay? And uh, those capacitors are meant to send the ground these, uh, these spikes, this ripple, yeah? Yes, I did remove the capacitor, and I have replaced it. But if the ripple is here, on the next power supply, because obviously this is a big truck with many power supplies, the next power supply, it will have that caps. But just removing one cap from a power supply, that's not a big deal. Okay? 
Now, it's one more uh, important aspect here, and it's not about the laptops, maybe it's TV, maybe it's something else. To understand the switching power supply, yeah, uh, the way how they switch, because I did have a lot of questions about this. Even last day, someone texted me, you know what, sorry, and I have uh, on the coil, I have 150 volts. Someone asked me, you know, that's kind of normal, you know, there, there is switching. And the load of this power supply, because maybe we didn't understand the load. The load is this capacitor, yeah? So that's the first load. It is a load, okay? Which the capacitor is meant to, you know, here on the, on, the, on this, you'll have something like that and the capacitor is meant to stray this uh, switching thing yeah so after this after this point here you'll have uh, a line it's not a line it's never a line well let's say it's a line with less ripple yeah but to keep in mind the capacitor is the first load and without that capacitor the things can go uh, you know, it can go very wrong, especially on the, you know, you remember on TVs, on uh, motherboards, you know, where you have capacitor and the capacitor get a bump on the, on the top. Uh, actually, if the capacity, if the, if the capacitor is, is the, the value of the capacitor and the resistance, the resistance go high, the capacity goes low. Um, the power supply cannot stray this uh, repo, yeah? And uh, you'll have a lot of problems. Keep in mind, from the output, you have also... You have the feedback, yeah? You have two resistors, most of the case ground. And from here is going to your driver, yeah? Because the driver want to know what kind of voltage is on the output okay okay good let's go back okay i have another question so many people ask checking mosfets and most of the mosfets they have a diode inside Okay, uh, you have a diode on this. Uh, you have a diode here, connected here. And you have a diode uh, here. Now the internal diodes of the MOSFETs, they are there, and not, not only on the MOSFETs, you have the normal transistors, the... Uh, the diode is there to cut down any, any inverse voltage. On the same way like the diode is cutting down the... the inverse voltage on the relays. You know, on the relays on a diode, it's always a pair, okay? So on the same way, the diodes are there inside of the MOSFET because the people try to check the MOSFETs if the MOSFETs are good. But you can't really check them. Actually, you can check them. But the MOSFET, you have the gate. Okay, so the, the only way a MOSFET can be damaged is to be shorted. So from here to here, they have zero ohms. Well, you can't check the MOSFET like that. The MOSFET is not working like that. Like on this picture, the MOSFET is not working. It's working like that. With a resistor connected to ground, connected to this pin or to ground. It's you need a resistor there because otherwise the your MOSFET will be open and uh, you can get full very easily so you say okay it's shorted it's not 
is actually open by the any electro electrostatic charge. It's so easy. You just touch with the finger the gate. The MOSFET is open. Okay. So if it's not shorted, it's fine. But if it's shorted, yeah. No cellar if it's shorted. The only way to check the MOSFET is to connect a resistor from the gate. That's, that's very important to keep the MOSFET close. Okay. So let's go on the other page. So back to our uh, basic. One more important aspect. So let's say you have your thingy. And it's still not working. So you have your 3.3, you have your 19 volts, but it's still dead. Well, from that point, the things get a little bit more complicated, but usually the faults are here on this area. So you, you have 19, you don't have 19, or you don't have 3.3. On the on, on a laptop motherboard, like on all like the new ones the new ones starting from like five six years they all have two 3.3 volts power supplies it's a small one and a big one and uh, usually you have 3.3 with five volts together and you have another big one 3.3 so keep in mind if you have 3.3 here, it doesn't mean you are, uh, you know, you are, uh, you are okay. So you have to check each output of this power supply for short. Here you can check with the, uh, you can check with uh, with a multimeter. M many people they get fooled by the processor V core when actually the your processor can be around, I don't know, I don't know, five ohms. And say okay it's short you know it's not short so when you check that power supply just ignore the fact that it show you like short because it's not short if you check with the on the ohms you will see actually it's like five ohms and on the graphics you have like 10 15 ohms depends on the graphic chip there or so don't get full very easy it's very easy now the other problem is the 5 volts where you have the also the USB ports, yeah, it's supplying power to the USB. There can be a problem because on many cases you'll find shorted uh, USB ports. And if, if you have a short there, uh, it, the level, your laptop will not start. The way how the laptop works, yeah. This super IO chip, the my startup chip, it's also checking those power supply. Yeah, okay? each one they have the the power good pin. Yeah, power good pin. Keep in mind, it's very important. I'll explain you why. Okay, and all these pins are going on the super IO. Because uh, the super IO has to know if each power supply start, yeah, is starting, it's up and running, and after everything is okay, it will start running the startup sequence, like running the, the BIOS program. No before, yeah, not before. So, um, if one of these those signals are missing, like the power go signal, uh, the super IO will uh, not run the startup program, or it will shut down the, the laptop. Now it's an interesting thing. You remember uh, we had a, a HP laptop, and I think I replaced the power supply, the RAM power supply. You remember that video? That was a happy case where actually the, the that chip didn't have a, a power good signal. So let's say some chips, some drivers, they don't have power good signal. But many from uh, many of the, the the chips that they have, yeah, 
you have to pay attention so I, I don't have a video so I don't have a video replacing a power supply with a power good signal because it's a little bit more complicated I tried before so let's say you have a power good pin and you and okay I will come with another power supply because from some reason I can't find the driver of this or I can't fix this power supply and I come with a different power supply and my laptop will work and if you have the power good no it will not work yeah so you'll supply power and uh, your laptop will not start from a simple reason the power good signals is it's, it's timed from from what i understand it's around uh, 300 milliseconds so the super i is waiting for like max 300 milliseconds it's waiting 300 milliseconds for the power supply to start up and after that the power the power supply the driver it will send signal to the super i okay i'm up and running and everything is fine but without that time i don't know if it's 300 it's not always 300 i think it's between 100 milliseconds and 300 milliseconds so you cannot fool the super i just connecting the power good signal to minus or plus no because i tried and it's not working but you know what we can do and I, again i don't have this in a video I'll explain you why what I why, what I will do what you will do so what you will do if you don't have this signal you don't have this signal because obviously you replace the power supply with a different one so the easy way yeah is to take the power good signal from a different power supply yeah let's say from here yeah <laughs> and in that way you can fool the super IO actually the power that power supply is up and running that's very important it's a it's a big trick because that's the, the only way to, to fool the, your startup chief. Otherwise, you will not start. Okay? Yeah, that's a trick. I try to figure it out. You know, what can I do? Because I did have the power pin there. And I tried to switch it to ground, connect it to ground. I tried to connect it to 3.3, but it didn't work. So what I did, I connect that pin with another power good. Uh, pin from another power supply <laughs> and that's the way how i fool the, the the startup chip actually my power supply is good yeah okay that's good so this is our, that's, that most of the important uh, things on, uh, on a motherboard what do you have to check yeah it's, it's not but you have to understand where the faults are, yeah? You have to understand the line of power on the laptops. Let's say, yeah? Because obviously, where is, the, where is pressure? Where is current? Where is there? There the faults will happen. So like in this case, yeah, all this line, it's, you know, it's, It's high voltage when on our key is 19 volts and high power, high current. This is, this is the current from the battery, okay, here. And you have here on any power supply, here to ground. And also, you have the output. But that's less important. So your, your, your circuit is like that. That's very important because that's the most cases where the faults happen. So from here to here, a lot of amps are flowing. Yeah. that's the circuit of uh, where your power is going and most of the faults it, it happened there okay good
well you know with these times where actually you are stuck home it's it's a good opportunity just to exercise and uh, you know trying to you know trying to get better learn some things practicing practice is very important So what is left? Uh, I think we cover most the important aspects. Well, I'll try to get some ideas, and we can do a, a one more video. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to have my breakfast because right now it's 8 o'clock 8 o'clock in the morning, Wednesday morning So thank you for watching Like and subscribe if you like the video And uh, I guess I see you on the next one, yeah? Bye